All right. Happy Sunday and welcome everyone to episode 43 of Video Game Club. As always, I am your host, Tyler, and I have with me today the one and only Austin. Hello. Hello. And back I see again. That, that one and only. It was just one <laughs> shot. I, get, I got it. It was subtle. It took me a second. I understood. <laughs> <laughs> I was glad I was glad you picked up on that. And back again, someone who probably enjoyed this game because of cats, Mox. Hello. Yes, I did. The cat was adorable. And we have a special guest today, Vin. Hi. Thank you for having me on the show. How is it thank- going? Yeah, it's going well. Thank you so much for joining us. Um Yes, thank you. Oh, thank we you are, for having me. We are super excited. We've been like Super hyped to have you as a guest. Um, can you just like tell everyone like who are you? What do you do? Well, I'm I'm Finn, generally variety streamer with a focus on horror. Although I also do speedruns, nice. and that would be here on Twitch under the same alias of uh, Venada, or you can catch me on Twitter, just YouTube. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> All the things. All the things. And yeah, we I saw you. Uh, do like a speed run on GDQ this year, reached out and yeah, we are like super excited to have you. Um, So before we get started, Vin, we are curious, what is your favorite game? And if you can't pick one, like what's one of your favorites and why? Oh, that's a difficult one. Um, If I could pick one of my favorite games, so it would be Primal for PS2. I had a lot of fond memories with that growing up. It's a... the main reason is because, one, it is very gothic and aesthetic. I really mm-hmm. like that. Two, the soundtrack is absolutely phenomenal. And the actual storytelling, as cliche as it may be in areas, it's very well played in, other, like, in others. And for those reasons, it is one of my favorite games. Nice. I'll have to check awesome. it out. Austin, have you played it? I have not. I, yeah, I've so. heard of it, but I've never, I've never checked it out. Mox, you played it? I if, if, if I had to guess it. somebody's favorite game, I never would have guessed Primal on PS2. So that's <laughs> that's always cool to see something yeah. you don't expect in, in a favorite game. Well, oh, if, yeah. if you like rock or industrial music, you like the battle soundtrack. Okay, I'll check it out. Ooh, very cool. Um, and Vin, what have you been playing besides One Shot? Besides One Shot, I've actually been playing Metal Gear Revengeance for Ooh, one. We played that um, for a video game club. Yeah, and then a lot of Devil May Cry 5. Um, I did play a little Hello Charlotte, actually, on stream as well. But uh, generally speaking, it's around that. Uh, some Ruiner, some mm. good old Faith, you know, Chapter 2. The classic. And Ultra Kill, that sort of thing, yeah. Very cool. Uh, Mox, what have you been playing besides One Shot? Uh, Pokemon Legends, Arceus. Trying to Still. fill up my Pokedex, have a living dex. Yeah, it's important. What? You're going for a living dex for real? Well, I, I don't have either the of the shiny, what is it? Shining Pearl, Brilliant Diamond. Mm-hmm. And you need that to get some sort of like, quote unquote, DLC Pokemon. So I'm not including that. But yes, I am trying to get a living dex. The only time I've ever tried. Wow, that's crazy. I don't, I don't think I could do that. I mean, I could, but whew, I don't know. Austin, what have you been playing? Uh, I've been banging my head against the Tree Sentinel and Elden Ring a bit. <laughs> um, and other than that, I have been I'm working on Metroid Prime 2, trying to like finish out my Wii U games. And uh, I, don't, I don't have many left. Um, and Mega Man X6 I have started, because I beat X5. And this series is brutal. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I uh, I started Lost Ark, and uh, it's it's good so far. And I've also been playing some Elden Ring as well. And I cheated a little bit and started on some Paper Mario. So if indeed that does win the vote, I'll, I will be a little bit of ahead. And I've been having a really good time with it so far. Um, but we are here to talk about one shot. Now, before we get started, uh, just as a reminder, this is Video Game Club, where every two weeks... We, dis- we discuss a game voted on by our wonderful friends in the Bombchu Discord and discuss that game right here on twitch.tv slash TV. And if you can't catch us live, don't worry. You can find us on YouTube and all major podcast services. And if you like what you're hearing, 
please consider subscribing, rating, commenting, all those things. We really appreciate it. Um, I think I mentioned this last episode, but I saw some ratings on Apple Podcasts, and it was made me smile, made my day, made me super happy. Um, as a reminder, the nominations for this episode were Lisa the Painful, One Shot, and Earthbound. And One Shot won, obviously, that's what we're going to talk about. But I am curious, uh, Vin, you played, you've played Lisa, right? One of them? Um, I've actually played two, uh, Lisa the Painful and the Joyful. And, and yeah, what do you think about, I'm, I'm, I don't know anything about oh, those man. games, but. Lisa the First is free. Um, there's a bit of a warning with that one, though. It does cover abuse. Okay. And there are some uh, calling, like there's some calls back to that in the painful and a little bit in the joyful, not so much because that's a different character than entirely. Lisa the Painful is a roller coaster of a game. It's how it's inspired by Psychonauts and Earthbound, RPG Maker game, but it has mm. its own very unique flair. Hmm. With its unique uh, character design, like the enemy designs are absolutely phenomenal. They're really well done. The storyline is it it is heart wrenching, but it's also hilarious at the same time. The, the Widdly to Diddly really did well in that, and it's also one of the first games where I just bought the OST separate to. Mm. It was that good. Yeah. Um. The follow up then I remember that was a Kickstarter goal because uh, it did begin as a Kickstarter. Uh, game um if they got a certain amount they're going to make the joyful and the joyful i actually speed run uh as well so really fun game with that one too yeah oh very cool yeah so it's very let's yeah i'll have to we'll have to check it out maybe we'll re-nominate it or something in the future and we'd we'd love to have you on if we do that yeah yeah because i feel like you'd be really knowledgeable be able to talk a lot about it um, mm-hmm. But we're going to talk about One Shot, which is a puzzle adventure game developed by Future Cat, which is a team of three people. Um, oh, man, I'm going to like butcher this this girl's last name, and I feel so bad. But Eliza Velasquez? 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 Yeah. That's Velasquez. probably right. I'm, I'm awful. Velasquez, yeah. <laughs> uh, they did programming scenario writing uh some designs then we got michael shirt debugging some water effects and some music and then night margin who uh is casey goo um and they were the main artist did some music and character designs it was published by a japanese company i believe it's japanese because they have like a bunch of like rpg maker stuff too and some other like it looked very japanese based on their portfolio uh digica d-e-g-i-c-a um it was initially released as freeware on June 30th, 2014, and it came a couple of years later to PC in 2016. Um, the engine for the freeware version was RPG Maker 2003, and the uh, re-release was made in RPG Maker XP. Um, and we all, I'm assuming everyone here, played the Steam version, which is the 2016 version of the game. Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. Um, do, has anyone played the freeware version by chance? I have not. It did not. It wasn't even on my radar. I would say. Yeah, I didn't know it existed. No. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know either. Yeah. So, what was going on in 2016 in gaming? Well, we had uh, hardware like the Oculus Rift, HTC Vive, Xbox One S, PS4 Slim, PS4 Pro, PSVR, um, and then software we had Persona Five, Uncharted Four, Inside, Dark Souls Three, Overwatch, and a few games we've played on Video Game Club already. It's time to guess I that always game. Always mean to look it up ahead of time. <laughs> Just like be prepared, and I always forget until right, right. One at this of them. Moment. One of them we played very, very, very recently. A 2016 game where you kill stuff uh, with guns. And hell. Oh, Doom. Doom. Doom 2016, of course. Yeah, <laughs> Doom. Yeah. Uh, uh, the Boss Rush game, Fury. Uh, the very the, one of the. The first lost episode of Video Game Club, Titanfall 2. Titanfall, oh yeah. And then the first game that we played with Mox, Firewatch. Ah! All 2016, yeah. What a great year. Yeah. 2016 in gaming. Vin, do you, can you, do you remember like what you were doing in 2016 as, in regards to like playing games? Oh boy. Uh, that's going back a fair bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, um, 2016, I... Like, to be honest, I kind of ditched uh, console gaming. Mm-hmm. 
uh, after the PS3. And I kind of just transitioned then over to PC. And of course, it's like, ah, oh, yeah, I get to like play all the, the old classics. And when I'm thinking of PC gaming, it's just like, oh, having the disc, uh, the disc version of Painkiller. And that's also you going into hell and shooting stuff up. And it's just like, <laughs> oh, yes. is it Doom or is it Painkiller? Hell yeah. <laughs> <What a great laughs> <day. laughs> that's awesome. Um, yeah. So yeah, that- for a few titles. Yeah, so that was, uh, that's a little, you know, some highlights about One Shot. So, in One Shot, um, you control a child called Nico, who is placed in this, like, I don't know, like, uh, sunless world. It's, it's like a very dark place. You start off in this area called the Barrens, and this game, like, it's mainly focused on, like, Nico, but it's, uh, the player, it's one of those unique games where, the player is like a separate person than the person that you're controlling. So like usually when you play a game traditionally, you're, you know, making movements that are moving in a person and you like play as that person. But in this one, the character and yourself are very separated. Um, and that's, that's in the very B, you know, the first like what, 10 minutes of the game. That's something that the game kind of tells you basically that this is going to be a bit of a different experience. Um, there's a bunch of <laughs> uh, this game is just really unique. I was trying to whenever I was like putting this together, I was trying to think of like how can we explain this game without really spoiling it? And it's really hard. If you go to like read like all the Steam reviews, like they're all like this game's amazing, just play it. Um yeah, everyone's told me don't don't look up anything about it. Yeah. Don't read anything, just just play it. So I'm going to uh I'm going to like we're going to like kind of tiptoe around the the mechanic we'll talk about that later on the 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 reason why you really should just kind of play it yourself and see what happens um but so we're we're not going to talk about that right now but we will later and when we do we'll be sure to put on the spoilers tag um yeah but this is a game that was made in rpg maker like we said before it's primarily composed of solving puzzles that involve items there's a lot of like combining items uh, with other items to make different things happen uh, there's no combat in the game uh, you can also have items interact with like a person or like something else like in the world as well. Um, there's a bunch of like in-game computers in the game that you can uh, interact with. Um, it does some things that we'll talk about later. Well, they give you hints if and, you get stuck. Uh, right. And this game is, you may notice like in the recording that um, Austin is playing it in windowed mode. And that's because this game does recommend that you do play this game in window mode. but. The, the TLDR of this game is that it's a, it's just like an over-the-top um, RPG puzzle game. I would say not RPG, just like a puzzle adventure game. And it's pretty short and sweet. Um, and it's really charming, I would say. Really charming game. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's talk about the development. So we mentioned before uh, that it, was, it started as freeware. Um, that version was made in a month. Um, and it was released on June 30th, 2014, which we already talked about. Um, it, it was an entry into, there was an uh, indie game maker contest, um, and they submitted it as a game for that contest. It didn't receive any acc- accolades or anything, but um, people did like it. Uh, they, that's the reason they decided to release the game on Steam. Um, the reason why it's called One Shot, did anybody look this up? It's. Or, I or would no. say it's a you spoiler. It's a spoiler. It's, yeah. You would say it's a spoiler. Yes, I think. Yeah. Hmm. So apparently, the first version of the game was supposed to be done in one playthrough. Like you could not. There was no uh, closing the game out. You had to just finish it all in one go, and that's why. That's part of the reason why it's named uh, One Shot as well. I'm, I I understand the reason why you guys are hinting at it as well. But I thought that that's really interesting because you don't see many games like that today. At least I don't know any. They're like, you need to play it all the way through now. And when you close, it goes away. Um, so, yeah. Some of the inspirations for this game were uh, Hy- Hyper Light Drifter, uh, Link's Awakening, and The Little Prince. Did any of you guys like kind of feel those inspirations while playing it, Austin? No. no. I, also, I also did not. Did you, Vin? No, honestly. Yeah. It's yeah, I don't know. I but. mean, it has that cutesy 
feel that Breath of the Wild has, but you know, it kind of translates in its own distinct way, rather than you saying, oh, that's like that. Yeah. There is some uh, f- fourth wall breaking that uh, we'll go into more detail about, um, and that was inspired by Psycho Mantis from Metal Gear Solid. Psycho Mantis. <laughs> Um, also that this game was released, like a lot of people like kind of couple this game with Undertale and like say that, you know, like they put it in that bucket, I guess, of games. Um, but whenever the developer was being interviewed, she said that she sees Undertale as like an anti-influence and that they wanted to do like a unique take on the, uh, for, on this like format and stuff. Um, it's an anti-influence. Yeah. That's, that's super weird. Cause like, I definitely get a lot more Undertale in this than. Hyperlight Drifter or, or Link's Awakening. Yeah, same. But you know, that's that's what they say. <laughs> um, <laughs> there are some more conventional puzzles that are in this game, and uh, those were inspired by classic adventure games such as The Secret of Monkey Island. Um, if no one's played that, I highly recommend checking that out. And then, as we mentioned before, two years later, there was a game released on Steam, which was uh, developed in RPG Maker XP. Um, they added a new ending, uh, like about six months later, uh, like four months later in March of 2017, uh, called Solstice. Um, did anyone play? I think Vin, you played Solstice, right? The, that um, ending? I did get that ending. Yeah. 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 I yeah. did as I well. I just, I did, I distinctly remember the word. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you guys will have to talk about that because I only got... I just did one ending. Austin, did you just do one ending as well? I did. Yeah, yeah. I feel like this game is not complete. You have to do Solstice. There's no reason to play this game without doing Solstice. I felt I felt yeah. like a I had a complete experience, but I oh, no. feel like I probably should have gone for Solstice, but after one pl- after one playthrough, I was not compelled. I did not want to play through the game again. Uh, you don't have to. You don't Dang. have to. Yeah, Whoa. I was locked it into a, a screen at the end, so anytime I launched it again, I was still stuck there. We'll get there. Well, okay. yeah, we'll, we'll get, get there. <laughs> okay. Uh, on December eighth of two thousand twenty-one, it was the game's fifth anniversary. The developers announced that they're working on a console release that is supposed to come out in twenty twenty-two, and hmm. it's going to have some new features designed for consoles. I'm very interested how that will work with yes. the mechanic that we will yeah. talk about in the spoiler section. Um, it will be very interesting. So, how did it review? Uh, mostly positive reviews. It wasn't like heavily reviewed when it first came out. Um, obviously, on Steam, it's overwhelmingly positive. Uh, some things that people mentioned that they really liked was that it was charming, clever. It was uh, really well written. Um, it was a bit unexpected. Um, they really liked the art direction, the soundtrack. Uh, some of the cons was that people just, you know, uh, the puzzle design, and that there wasn't like much depth to the game. And Austin, I'm very interested to hear what your uh, pros and cons are for this game once we get there. <laughs> sales, there wasn't anything released that I could find on sales, but assuming like we can take like, you know, how well it's done on Steam, all the reviews. I believe, don't you have to purchase a game on Steam to review it? Yeah. Yeah. So like, we can look at that and kind of guess, but it, it must have done pretty well based on all those reviews and everything. Um. Before we jump into the plot, Austin, when you nominated these games, did you purposely pick this one because of its like because it was rated so highly, or was there something else that kind of drew you to it? I'm just curious. Um, I did rate. I, I did pick it because it was rated high. It, basically, uh, the three games I picked were games that I had heard just rave reviews about, but that never really kind of made it to the the mainstream. Like everyone's played it. Um, so that's why I did Earthbound, Lisa, and One Shot. I, all all games I had heard lots of really good things about, and just had really great reviews across the board from people who bought it. Hmm. Fair enough. Okay, I'm going to throw on a spoilers tag. We're going to go through this plot, and as the plot queen, Mox, mm-hmm. please 
interrupt. I will. Where needed. Yep. We're, we're just gonna we're just gonna go down. So you start off. Um, there's a cat like child named Nico who who uh, wakes up in this like house. Uh, it's completely empty, completely dark. Um, you move Nico around, and I think this is it's at the very beginning. There's a computer. In, I think it's either in Nico's room or right outside it where you interact and that is when you the like an external dialog box pops up um, it's like a windows alert basically and it it tells you it's a I think it says just like hello and then your username whatever it is I'm assuming yeah, they're was, getting sure yeah do you, where do you think they're getting that name from is it from I think just your your username cuz like I have my user my windows username set as Austin and it was like hello Austin I was like yeah. oh jeez <laughs> Yeah it it kind of like, I want you to make it clear that it's like a windows alert outside of your windowed game it, it wasn't is. within the game it uses yeah. like the functionality of windows Yes yeah assuming you're playing on PC Yep did that take you You can only play it on PC right now No yeah. no I think it's available on Mac and Linux actually Oh, I mean, yeah, those are PCs. Oh, oh, sorry. I say, yeah, yes. <laughs> um, PC in that sense. You know, everyone, you know, some people use those personal computers still, some people don't, uh, so. Eh. Uh, um, Vin, whenever that alert box happened, were you, like, quite surprised as well, or did you kind of know what to expect already? I didn't know what actually to expect, because I avoided all the reviews. I was like, I'm just going to go into this plan. So, mm. seeing that little pop-up, it's like, oh, that's my... That's my username, my account. Okay. Like, okay, that, that's, that's kind of cute, you know? I like um, that it asked you to confirm if that's your name in case you have, like, a different name set as your name. Yeah, it does Hello, say that. Hello, username one. <laughs> that's not my name. Hello, admin. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so you, you, uh, you find out, I believe through that machine, that... that the world is like falling apart. It's it's on its last leg. You need it needs the sun to be restored. And the world sun is basically in this world. It's a light bulb that Nico carries around. Um, you exit your house and you're in this land called the Barrens. You can run around and explore the Barrens. The Barrens are just like this. I don't know how you would describe them. Like this outdoor industrial industrial cave not not quite, like cave like almost but it's outside there's all these pools of water um they're like blue and shiny and pretty or are those the shrimp in the water that are making the shrimp. it blue yeah each each separate area has like a different source of light that it, yeah. it's like it's its specialty and this one is blue phosphor which is found in the special uh as you explore you uh find this robot who i f- Forget what the robot's name is, but they give you Profit Bot. What's it called? Wasn't that it? I thought it was Profit Bot. Profit Bot? It could be Profit Bot. They tell you basically everything, like they update you on the story, what's going on, how you need to carry the sun to the central tower to restore daylight, and they tell you, like, hey, you're in the barrens. Um They tell they also tell you that, like, yo, you can talk to God. <laughs> and what what it is is that you, like Tyler or Austin. You are this god, and and uh, you are, are the messiah, and you are guiding Nico on this journey. Nico is the messiah. Yeah, Nico's the messiah, but oh, sorry. the messiah can talk to God. Yes, yes. Um, and <laughs> you guys kind of like work together um, to you know solve this problem of restoring the sun. Uh, in that area, you get to meet Silver, who's like a tamed robot. They don't... They, they uh, do they eventually tell you what that is? Uh, yes, in uh, Solstice. Okay, um, but my initial impression, and not having played Solstice for me, I, it was just like a robot that was like a bit more advanced. Um, but, do you want me to tell you? Well, no. Yeah. Let's get to it because it's part of Solstice. It's it really is? important in Solstice. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. But uh, basically, you explore this area, you solve some puzzles, you're able to, you get some some items and stuff, and you're able to eventually um, get this robot. Who works this like ship? It's a people. robot. R O W B O T. Yeah, it's a robot. <laughs> Just great. Yes, this robot <laughs> gets you to this other area that's uh like uh almost like a forest type area. It's called Glen. I think is what they call it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. There's like t- 
town there with like residents and stuff. Um, you meet uh, a, like a I don't are they like are they each just like child children or are, is it like a parent child yeah. relationship? No, no, they're child. They're brother and sister. Just brother and sister. Okay. Um, you enter this area and then you solve some more puzzles. There's I'm, I'm, I can't like I don't know. There's everything's green. How would you describe this area? Like like what 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 do you do in this area that was significant? You it's like foresty and this has the green phosphor, which is I think the grass. I'm mm -hmm. waiting for Vin to jump in. <laughs> no, okay. Um, compared to the barrens where it's all empty and devoid of anything, there, it's also more brown of the barrens. Um, you know, there's more there are pumes of poisonous uh, gases emanating oh, yeah. throughout the area. It's very factorial. Um, then you head over to the Glen, where it's much more organic, livelier, and much more natural in appearance. You see green everywhere. There's green phosphor, yeah, as well. Um, do you even notice when you were exploring? Because exploration is a very big part of the game. Um, when you go south, you see a very red robot, and the other robots, in comparison, are rather greenish. You know, and then in the barrens, they're more blue. Mm. Ah, so they each I have their know. own. I didn't pick up on that there's, actually. Mm. Each of them are color coordinated to their significant areas, and I thought that was very nice actually. Ah. And you can pick up then, like, thanks to the puzzles, uh, you can interact with all of the different. Well, not all the different characters have a, uh, too much to say, but some of them in particular do, mm. which can then bring forth different events, which later, later. My 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 favorite event from the uh, Glen was the sheep puzzle. Yeah, that was very cute. Yeah, it's fun. I uh, th there's also a lot of overgrowth in the Glen. Uh, yes, until mm -hmm. you go find uh, a particular character. Go, g yeah. I don't go know if you're getting to that. No, yeah, dive into that, please. Um, yeah, the, uh, I can't remember the the character's name, but it's Isn't basically the forest a spirit. Or something? Yeah. yeah, and and yeah. she's dying. Mize, I it's think. Basically, like M A I Z. Maze. Maze. Yeah, like corn. Go. And it's too late to to save her, but she asks, "Hey, can I can I hold on to the sun for just a little bit? Would that be okay?" I, I said yes. I don't know what happens if you say no. You oh. have to let the sun go to order in order to finish like the area because you have to have yeah. okay. For okay. It. Yeah. It's kind of like a false okay. option. I also said yes. I didn't know you could say no. Um, but yeah, yeah. You, you give her the, the sun, and, and when you do, um, the overgrowth kind of goes away and allows you to progress. I think the big thing is you have to get like a, you get like a golden feather in this area, right? And you get like mm -hmm. uh, something else, and you can, you, you have to like use the feather as a pen to do like a certain problem. Um, and then you go back to get the sun, and you find out that it's, well, one, it's dimmed. Two, the nature spirit is like dead or gone. And then you notice that when you pick it up, that it like shines again. Um, yes. So, yeah, it's really yeah. interesting. Uh, I, I, and you can take a, a seed along with you. Yeah. yeah. Yes, you can take a seed along with you, which you plant mm -hmm. when you go to the third area, which is called the refuge. This is like a big city like area. Is there anything you guys want to say about Glen, about the Glen area before we move on to the refuge, though? I did uh, just like so for flavor. Do the, it. The the big robot guarding the area, who was like, "Oh, you're the Messiah. Come on in. Wait, you have to sign in." And I don't have a pen, <laughs> but he won't let you in until you have a pen, even though he knows you're the Messiah. It's like okay. <laughs> I like the puzzle to with, solve the area is cute. It's with them yeah. being robots, you know. That it's like, well, I gotta follow the the protocol. One thing yes. I loved about the puzzles in this game is they were all like. Like I feel like I'm very stupid when I play like games like this. Like I struggle so hard to solve problems like this. And like for this game, I felt like I could just do it. And I don't know. Like it it wasn't like imp it it wasn't like I needed a guide. Like they were all like, "Well, if you like thought about it enough, like you can you can solve these puzzles." I thought that was really cool. Okay. So you go you go to the refuge um and I think you yeah, in the refuge you're there's someone the lamplighter is trying to use the elevator to go down um to the to the surface 
Um, so you have to make this uh, ground button, which I thought was a really fun <laughs> puzzle as well. I also like in that area how they're very respectful of like your time. Like there's all these like shortcuts that you can unlock. Mm-hmm. You know, and, like, and short, and you can fast travel. I still how how do you fast travel in this? You game? have to be outside. And then you open the, well, I don't, again, I play with a keyboard, so it's A, (laughs) and I press A, and then it says, like, travel, or something like that. Tyler, you know you can push, like, Y to open your inventory. Yeah. But if you push start, I think it's start, then you get, like, a little drop-down menu from the top, and Mm -hmm. the first option in there is uh, travel. I never travel. fast travel. I walk Oh my gosh, I can't believe, did you at least turn on, like, sprint? Yeah, I sprinted. Sprint? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's so I played it the first time as well. And just, oh my goodness. Three quarters of the way through the game, I paused and it's like, oh wait, yeah, they did mention a fast travel, but I just, <laughs> I didn't realize I had to pause for that. Well, duh. You, uh, after solving the puzzle to build this ground button, which is, I feel like pretty clever, um, you use the button to go down to the ground level and you, your first, you need to go to the library because you got this book with this black clover on it. And you, and you can't read it. Um, so you go to the library and they're like, yo, you can't. <laughs> Sorry, we know your mission's super important, but like we can't let you in because you don't have a library card. Like, we it's can't a robot you- that stops you. Of yeah, course. of course. And to get a library card, they have to talk to the person that you're trying to talk to. <laughs> right. Who's in the back, who won't answer. And so you end up having to go uh, borrow someone's library card after solving the problem. Uh, solving a puzzle and then you use you get these camera parts um to put in this like big camera that you use to take a photo of yourself and then you yeah make your own library card basically which i which i thought was like a really clever puzzle again it was really cool i liked yeah the lenses are like it's how a camera works yeah Yeah. i mean if you knew how a camera worked you didn't have to get the I, i struggled to get the picture onto the library card because I, I I got the item that I needed to do that so long before and it, the description in your inventory like just the name of the item mm-hmm. it's glitter is, glue yeah. but it, like it just I, like I kept just reading glitter I, like my brain was not going over the glue I was just like what do I do with this glitter this is what a man who has not <laughs> this glitter? Uh. You, you have not done enough art projects in school sir yeah <laughs> oh man Clearly but uh, Kiff, great. the the character who gives you the library card, looks very suspiciously similar to another character that you meet in the Barons. Oh, who? D- that character right. never so, tells you the name, right? Not until the end? Sorry, keep going. Oh, sorry. Um, but it's on the key card, uh, uh, Kiff's um, library card. And you can, y- you're can you prompted to go back in and ask. It's like, oh yeah, she looks kind of like that lady from earlier, doesn't she? And then you, it's just like backstory, but you don't have to do it. I just mm-hmm. thought it was nice. I, I think I made the connection, like I showed her the amulet. Yes. And uh, then then she got all wistful and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, it's like you're, you guys are probably sisters, okay. <laughs> well, so, I mean, I think, well, oh, we'll, we'll say three souls. <laughs> keep going. <laughs> um, so you get your book translated. Um, af- so you, it tells you like that you need <laughs> that basically like you need these uh, uh, phosphoric items in order to go into this to the tower. And they also explain about this thing called the entity, um, that the entity kind of controls the tower as well. And the entity is this thing that's been talking to you over these uh, computer terminals, and the one that's been uh, kind of you know messing with you basically. But also gives you hints. You aren't sh- really sure what side they're on. I felt like they were kind of evil from the start, but I don't know. Well, they chastise you and say, like, why are you here? I hate that you're here. And they're, like, trying to stop you. But then also, if you get stuck, you can ask them for hints. And they'll be like, really? You don't get it? Okay, fine. Let me tell you how to do it. Mm. And I didn't, I didn't ever get to the hint part. but Well, I did because some <laughs> of the instructions were rather obscure. And they... I mean, I, they require you to go into your, like, my documents folder, which I don't use on this computer. So I, I, like, I was a little was... spoiled because I tuned into, so Vin was, Vin was streaming this, this game. 
and yeah, I popped in. I put in. two and two together. <laughs> yeah, I popped in when she was at the documents part, and she was looking at stuff, and then I uh, was like, "Oh, I'm, I think I'm encountering spoilers. I'm gonna leave." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I ended it, up checking the the like the game files instead. So did and, I. So I did. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. So I found like that that blank uh, or that just underscores executable, yes. and I. I was like, ooh, what's this? I'm supposed to... Oh. And I, I kept opening it at different points of the game, like, that's got a clover shape on it. Maybe I need to open that executable. Mm. But yeah. it was for something else later. Yes. But I thought, uh, like, by the documents, I went through the, the game's fi- like actual files, and I was just like, oh, wow, I just spoiled myself for, like, half the documents in oh! the game. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's so sad. <laughs> It was just basically lore about and characters, but nevertheless, I I did feel a bit sad about that. Yeah. Um. So you end up you you end up needing like uh these golden items. Um. You end up having some of them already. So, uh, George, the person who translated the book, gives you the final one. You go to the tower. Um. And this this is is this when like uh they start like they start turning off the game for you like automatically. Not yet. Because the yet. way you have to activate the tower, I think the hint that they give you is like, it's to you, the person playing the game, and like, they'll know what this means, but look at the um, floor in this room and use that icon in the top right corner, which of course is very like, uh, it doesn't make sense when you're not in the room that they have you go to, but then when you go to the room, it's the, the close, the X, the red X, that's the floor. You have to yes. click that, you have to close the game. Yeah, and when I was playing this, I I went to the tower ahead of like already before knowing this information, and I would go in there and I was like, "Oh, Red X, I'll close the game." It's trying like because I didn't realize it was the tower at the time, and it doesn't do anything. And I was like, "Oh, this this must be useless this room," so I just left. Oh my god! <laughs> and, and it turns out it's like the end of the game and like the most significant you know thing. But yeah. The only other time, like the game shuts off by itself, is when Nico mandatorily is like, "Can I sleep now?" Yeah, and then yeah. you get like a little dream sequence when you boot the game back up, and it's very, it's very adorable. Can you chat about her dream? Oh, his or her dream? I didn't. I forgot Nico. I didn't run yeah. into that. They will. It's like the you didn't find huh? any of the beds. No, the beds I did. I would sleep in them. Is that what you're talking about, Vin? The beds. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. But when you go back into the game, it's like. The picture that you see is their dream. Right. Yeah. And I thought it was very cute. And it kind of mm-hmm. plays a little bit into the refuge area as well. Because one of them is a dream about, I don't, I don't know if I can see yeah. it. Yeah, you can. Yeah. It's, it's not really much of a spoiler. It's just like she dreams of pancakes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then it's just like, oh yeah, there's this uh, cafe in the refuge. Can we go there, by the way? And so to get some, some pancakes. And it's like, oh, mom's pancakes are the best though. She'd yeah. always make them when I was sad, and it's like, oh. From the hazelnut, uh, right? Bring hazelnut home. pancakes? Yeah. 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 You So you go up to the tower, you close the game, you reopen it. You This is when when you open it again, you're in the black room. I think that's yes. when, yeah. Mm. And then you go, you have to find the uh, computer terminal to talk to it, and then the rest of the game, you do this puzzle. And uh, Austin, you you struggled a bit to find this computer. <laughs> oh my god, dude! I ran around for ten minutes, and I finally was just like, I, I started looking up guides, and they were like, "Walk till you find it." And it was like, I've been walking for ten minutes, man. <laughs> <laughs> so I reached out to Tyler and Mox to see if they had any tips, and Tyler was just like, "Yeah, just walk in this direction." And literally, I took a step, and it it was there. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I don't know how. It I had reminded to look. me like you made find... Nikki in that regard. Mm. And just walk yeah, until you find that. it. Yeah, but then it's just like, oh yeah, up and right. Maybe that'll do it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, your terminal was was top right. Yeah, I just kept going up and then a little to the right, and then that's where the terminal was. Mine was bottom right, I think. God damn. Mine was also bottom right. I think I think it loops. That's what I don't that's remember. it. Interesting. I must have p- just been going in exactly the wrong direction for forever. <laughs> Ten minutes. It's just, just crazy. <laughs> um, so you you find the terminal, and then what happens is is that you have to solve these puzzles. There's like a few of them, and they require like the first ones are like these like where you have to light up these lights, 
and you have to put another you have to open up like another uh file and put it like over the game when you do it well it's a program they have you run this program that is nameless i guess right. it's a bunch of underscores and they tell you why in like the game or and it's it has um opacity so you have like you know part of it's clear part of it's yep. not so you have to overlay it on the game to tell you what pattern you have to make in the floor tile puzzle i am I, amazing I, I actually ran into a problem with that <gasps> um oh really mine wasn't updating it's, it gave me the <gasps> the answer for the first room so i had to close it and reopen it for each and every room whoa but, oh um on my second playthrough it didn't happen but on the first one it did and i was like god this is tedious <laughs> that's super weird that is weird yeah um uh it worked but it's just like wow dang what happened yeah and you and you use that program like it changes uh so like after you do this light thing you do this like there's basically like four directions you can go in and you have to like go with the right direction and i found it kind of confusing like to me the way i yeah. it got it in my head it was like it's the opposite of what it's telling me to do what D- did you line it, up the clovers that's how it felt to me no, I did, did not. Did you line up the clover? I, I did not. I did not. Oh no. my goodness! Oh, wait, 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 wait till you hear how I did the door part. I brute forced it. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> and I, have, I have a sheet I of paper. I had to brute force the, the end of it. I, had a, I was so confused by. Uh, that. I had a yeah. I have a sheet of paper here with go door three, then one, then two, <laughs> then one, then five. You know? Oh my goodness! Yep. yep. Oh no! So but the uh, whole point was that it was like the the clear thing that you overlay and you're you know when you have an item in your hand it puts it in the bottom right and the item that you're holding is like a book with a golden clover on it Mm -hmm. and so you overlay the the fancy program until the clovers line up and then like the sheet of paper that's telling you like game lore from some external person yeah points at the door or whatever or the entity or whatever like the, um, the author the yeah. PC is like put the window inside the window that because it also puts the documents like put the window inside the window. I was like, oh, it must be that application that was in the thing. Oh, and mm, I accidentally I hit the. the to put that. Yeah. During the first playthrough, um, when I had to keep clicking out of the the application to get it for the next window because of the series of puzzles, but it was also relaying information to you through that program. Mm-hmm. The the window for the window. <laughs> I hit the game X by accident. And had to oh, do it no. all over again. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, afterwards, though, I I liked that little puzzle, though. To be fair, yes, um, it was very. Because yeah. then, in the after you go through a series of doors, you have to do like um specific uh patterns on a large kind of little like in the Glen. Mm-hmm. To help save the kid, where you have to step on a certain, like, a, each panel yep. to light it up and leave the others blank. The same thing happens towards the end of the game. Um, I actually really like that. I don't know why, I just liked it. Yeah, it's, it's it fun. Very well it's done. a fun puzzle, yeah. It's well done, yeah. Mm-hmm. You get to the top, and then you have to make the decision. And I feel like everyone here probably, well, except Vin, or Mox, did you get every ending? I didn't. Well, the, the there's only two endings. I don't know why you're saying there's multiple endings. Okay, so if you if you um decide to, so you have the light bulb, right? And it come you come to. I guess I think the author maybe tells you. I can't remember exactly, but basically you find out that if you destroy, if you put the sun in, basically Nico like can't go home. Um, but if you destroy it, Nico gets to leave. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So I, I, you know, put the sun in, put the light bulb in. Yeah, I did that too. Okay. (gasps) Austin, (laughs) I sacrificed the child. Yeah. I also put the sun in. So. Oh no. That that I destroyed that light bulb. What? Yeah. Huh. So what was your ending like after that? Is it the same that it is for everybody? I guess. No matter what you pick. I guess you're saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, both of those. They're just like different cutscenes, but the ending is the same in that it is an ending. It's like a re- mm. it restarts. Right. And that is Solstice, which I am not aware of. So, Vin and Moxie, like, you guys will have to talk a little bit about Solstice. Like, to be fair, throughout the gameplay, when you talk to the characters in the refuge, they do mention Solstice. Mm. And that's without achieving the ending. 
And it's mm. just like, they keep, it's a recurring word as well. Uh, it, it happens at least twice. And I was like, maybe there's something to that. Hmm. Did but you in the that end, on your um, second playthrough or on um, your first playthrough? Yeah. I noticed I couldn't start the game again. And I was just getting flashbacks to Undertale. Oh, God, I have to reset <laughs> this whole thing, don't I? All right. And then I, I went back into the save file. And it's just like, they, because there was, um, Towards the end in the refuge, there's the fox saying, if you can come back, come visit me. Yes. Mm. And I was like, okay, there has to be a way then. Without restarting the game, there has to be a way to actually see the fox again. And I was thinking, what happens if I just delete certain files in the save <laughs> and the backup? So I just experimented. Because um, even, yeah, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> kidding. Um, there, because even in the end, in the little the little application that pops up says if you're you know if you do something right you'll be able to come back again, and it's it just tells okay. you, yeah, oh. it tells you. Uh, so I said, all right, well, it has to have something to do with the save file, and I deleted p underscore like save data, and that was it. Hmm. So I started the game again. You weren't just like greeted by the bedside anymore with the, the the sun coming in. Nico gets out of bed and is like, oh, something's kind of weird. Why is that name in my head? You know, the remote control is gone, but you you interact with the PC and then all of a sudden the code is like uh, in your documents. So you go in and it just says the code is blah, blah, blah. And it's solstice. Even, yeah, it's solstice. Um, hmm. But with the I is a one and you know all that. Yeah. But, however. The the other thing was that I noticed when you're going through documents as well, I'm just going to take a little bit of a trip back to the barns when you need to get a gas mask, the mm -hmm. puzzle there, when the all the text is all kind of like, it's like Zalgo text, partially, but in the <laughs> solstice ending, none of that is there, it just says the password is mm, and I like that. That's yes. all. I, please, Fox. Uh, sorry, I, I'm, I'm taking over this. I, did, I didn't mean to. No, no. Go ahead. I don't know. Go. <laughs> there isn't much more to tell. <laughs> um, you just kind of continue as normal, but uh, Nico's like, why do I know that name? And then you kind of just go out about your merry business, like, oh God, I'm going to have to do this all over again, aren't I? Yes. And there's just going to be a few different like uh, differences here and there. And I was really afraid of that. But, but then... Yeah, it yeah. wasn't like that, right? Because there's a lot of like different like ways to traverse and then there's like different situations that you encounter right yeah you you talk to the robot again and you know has a little um a profit bot little battery in the back of the building as well and she's like okay this is profit bot and then he's like uh you know such and such and such but also there's the option what who is and then mm, your username so you get that special little interaction, and it's just like, I don't know who they are, but they clearly, you do, and just, just ask them. And it's like, have we met before? And it's like, yeah, we have, actually, Nico. <laughs> We're friends. <laughs> so, yeah, buddy old pal. So you, but yeah. if you go back to, so a bunch of different stuff happens, and then you- Well, go so you start actually, the game as normal, and you play up until you go to this part where on your first playthrough- you say, oh, I think I saw something yellow like shining off in the distance in this mine that you're not allowed to go into. Right. But then when you get there the, in the solstice um, playthrough, you like suddenly have this journal that you got halfway through the previous playthrough and it glows yellow, which is like the symbol that you need to interact with the game somehow. And then you're able to like manifest a little mine cart that lets you go into the back of the mine. And then at that point, the entity interacts with you and is like, "What's going on? Why can't I? Why can't I see you? Why can't I like follow you anymore?" Mm. And then you start the solstice ending. Very cool. And and it, yes, it's an, it's it's an entirely separate playthrough. It's like its own story. You aren't replaying anything except Does, up until that point. And it leads to the fox. So ultimately, you, well, yeah. So like you have to. Um, well, I like I almost don't even want to spoil solstice. Do but it. Should I? Okay. Yes. I mean, so the whole point of Solstice is that you need to bring um, this character in the back of the Barons. His name is Prototype or Proto. He's a robot. He was the prototype prophet bot. Um, you need to bring him to the final area. The uh, what's it called? The refuge. And so as you start like interacting with Prototype, um, 
the entity is like, no, no, you're not supposed to be doing that. And it's like causing glitches to bring the game down. And But the prototype creates like ways for you to move to the next area that are different from the first playthrough. So then you go to um, the Glen and you meet up with those kids again. And there's a charming thing with the block kicking where it's like in the first part of the game, you're obstructed by this tiny block and Nico's like, I don't know how to get around this. But then like this little girl is like, no, no, just kick the block. Right. But in the second playthrough, Nico's like, huh, I know what to do. And she kicks the block herself. Really adorable. Um, But then you like assemble this... um, the same idea you bring you get a boat and the boat takes you to this graveyard where the kids like mother's buried really sad but then you meet this kid who's the son of the author who is the entity not the entity a different person who's been telling you like no here's how you subvert the entity and like save the game mm. and so you build a flying machine with him i think his name is cedric yep cedric okay and then so from there you go to um the refuge where you meet the fox again and the fox's Rue. name is Rue and Rue is like, all right, well, so let's go back to this room that you couldn't access in the first playthrough, which is like this big safe, you know, looking area that had a countdown. But then you go to the countdown and it's zero and you have to enter a password into the to the door and it's solstice again. And, but you have to be there with Rue, Cedric, and uh, God, Proto. Yep. But then you're like, oh my God, what happened to Proto and um, Cedric? Are they dead? But no, they're not dead. So then you go <laughs> to this final area and you finally learn what- Taming um, is. Taming is. And it's, it's like when you treat a robot like a person and you show it that you believe that it's a person, that then it is able to subvert its programming and oh. act beyond its programming. So as soon as they explained that, I was like, oh, my God, this whole game is like about me taming this program because I believe that this program is like more than just a little game. You know, it's like it's not just a little program in my computer. Like, I really care about Nico. I really liked that that moment. But anyway, so then Nico has to tame the entity, which is actually shoot. Can't remember the name of it. World something. World machine. Yeah, um, and so World Machine is like the game that you're playing, and they explain that Cedric's dad, the author, and Rue and Proto come from like another universe where their world was dying, and so the author was trying to build like a program to save their world, which is World Machine. But then World Machine was like, no, no, I know that in order to run this program, you have to have a living person which then was the author, but now is Nico to like run the game. Dang. In, in order to like save the world. <laughs> and I'm not going to sacrifice this living person that's part of this game just to save this stupid world. And so World Machine is like causing all these glitches. But then, you know, their world ends and the author just like sends out his program into the ether. And it is one shot. <laughs> just like the <laughs> biggest meta thing ever oh god! it's like it's so important to play solstice anyway so then like so the computer your personal computer is like required to run one shot that is like nico is the human that is trying to save this universe and so nico like understands everything and is like you have to talk nico has to talk to the tamed world machine and convince it that you, she believes it, or you know, Nico yeah, believes it. Right, it believes that it's a person, and that's that's the game. This is some big, this is some big brain storytelling. I know. <laughs> I went for Vin to chime in what what she thought of it. If I, if I said this reminded me of a Star Trek: The Next Generation episode, do you know which one I would be talking about, Mox? Uh, I guess the, the one where they're like arguing if Data is a human being. That's what I was thinking of, but. Oh, I was just more talking about when you said they, like, the whole deal with of it was him sending out one shot into the universe. Just took me back to that, uh, yeah, the the episode with the flute. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Vin, go. What do you think of Solstice? The Solstice ending, yeah, I I really thoroughly enjoyed it to to the point where it's like, actually, should we discuss this? Yes, yeah, yeah. it's in spoilers. Yeah, yeah. Do it. It, it, it's also majorly fast paced in comparison to the other ones. Like majorly, you spend like a fraction of the time that you would during a normal playthrough. 
uh, doing solstice. Right. And I like the part where it's just like you are taming the PC, like the actual program itself. That was a nice little touch. And then the puzzle as well then with the Clover book is like you you even see it on your screen, but there is a clover of where to stand so that things in the book appear in the game so that you can progress. Because at first I was like, wait, what am I supposed to do? The book is glowing. I'll just leave. Okay, book no longer <laughs> glowing. Go back inside. Oh, there's a little clover in the ground. Okay, I'm, I'm going to stand there. Open my book. My book has come to life. Okay. So, um... But even throughout the entirety of the game, it's just like, yeah, we. we I don't want to put... N you do this, you put Nico at risk. But it's the only potential way to stop the world machine. And I'm sorry. I remember that being a line, I'm sorry. Mm. Uh, and and that, that was kind of... That was like, oh man, you're pulling on my heartstrings here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, the Souls Descending. However, when you do complete it, um, I'd like to note that the the save file does not need to be deleted or anything. You start the game again from scratch. Oh. And the only reason how I got... Okay, one of the achievements is it is done by playing the game offline, which I did. Oh. And hmm. I, I just happened, up, I happened upon it because it's just like, I don't... Okay, I, I couldn't sleep, and it's just like, I don't want people to know that I'm awake at like 4 a.m. playing one <laughs> shot, so <laughs> I played it off fine. So oh, I got that achievement. Did, I have all the achievements, did, spare one, Did you know? As a result. I, did you know that was an achievement when you decided to play it offline? No. You're kidding. I was just like, what the hell is this? I can't I, I believe didn't, I, <laughs> I did, But also, I have to say one thing, though, during the entirety of the playthrough. The only thing I think that bugged me was one of the achievements, because I went back and looked, and it's just like the rebirth little achievement. I didn't have water, but it's like you could find the so, yeah. tablet, yep. you could find the so, seed. Yep. Same. And then only when I was wandering in the glance, like, oh, this place is like, it's really organic. It has to have the water. It even has like, you know, the, yeah, whatever. Yeah. I, I just went south. The one area in the game that I didn't explore was the area that had the water. Mm. Yeah. I was a bit peeved about that. Um, yeah, yeah, I was. I, was, I too. was too. Yeah, at the end of my playthrough. Yeah. The only thing was like, um, everything is gorgeous. Everything yes. really is wonderful to explore. But if you are headstrong about finding something, you're not going to find it for a little bit. Yeah. Such is just my experience. But overall, ah, uh, it it was a very cute game. Yeah. The Solstice descending was very, very satisfying to play through. Mm. And doing all the little puzzles, you know, looking through your documents folder, because even in the Solstice playthrough, there are four files that pop up on your, your in your documents folder explaining to you what is going on, what you have to do, figure it out. Yeah. And having done all of that, it was I highly recommend this game. If you ever just get the chance, it was even on sale. That's when wait, you wait, know, yeah. thankfully save that. We're gonna do our personal takes. Yes. We okay. Will. Sorry. No, you're take good. Take a right, cool. Okay. Okay. So, cool. is there anything that anyone needs to spoil before I turn this tag off? No. Okay. <laughs> Mox, you're just speaking for the group. No. <laughs> we need to do our personal take. We do. It's time for the personal takes. I'm going first. Um, I played this game in chunks, and I would quit whenever I would sleep, and I felt like that was the, not me sleeping IRL, geez, uh, whenever Nico would sleep, and I felt like that was a really nice way for me to play this game, and I would recommend everyone play it that way. Um, I really, really enjoyed this game, though. Puzzles made a lot of sense. The world was really interesting. The like The art is really pretty. The music I wasn't like super into at the beginning, but towards the end I was like getting really into it. I thought it was really good. Um, I got like, like we kind of already talked about it. There's a couple different endings, and I was pretty satisfied with the ending that I got. Um, I didn't run into any issues either, like no bugs, nothing. Overall, I had a really good time. I'm not like super keen on this genre, like not like RPG maker games, but like puzzle games in general. Like I remember, you know, we played a. Uh, titanic game 999 is that what it's called mm -hmm. 
And I wasn't yes. like a super fan of that game because of the puzzles. It's a good game. But this one, I don't know. It's like the puzzles were accessible, even though like I had to brute force the end and I felt and now I feel really stupid. Um, I still had a lot of fun. And for me, this game would be a nine out of ten. And I would recommend what? everyone play it. It's short and sweet and really good. And I would give it a nine. Let's go to Ven, since Ven, you are already kind of, you know, <laughs> giving your <laughs> oh, take no. anyway. Uh sorry about that. Um Honestly, it is a very it's a very short game, as you mentioned. It's even shorter when you are trying to achieve the solstice ending, and and then compare like uh, after finding out about the quick travel time that you spend playing the game is even shorter again, and yeah, of course, like during Nico's little naps and whatnot, and then you know interacting with the characters upon you know booting up, but that it's a nice little time to take a little break, and I think that's what the game was intending. Um, but even characters, they'll they'll note like, "Hey, you were asleep for hours. What do you mean you just you, it only felt like a few seconds?" You know. Mm -hmm. Um. Overall, very cute game. I liked the aesthetic where it had it. It has a colored theme to it throughout. Um. With Nico herself, but also I don't know. It's like it's a very warm color. Uh. Mm -hmm. That is used for most areas. You know, Spirit of the Glen has blue. You know, the blue shrimp and whatnot as well in the barns, but still. Um. Overall, the palette feels very warm, and I like that. Music, the score was very gentle, very laid back. It was relaxing. It matched the tone when you're just kind of wandering around the plains and figuring stuff out. It's nice to listen to in the background. Yeah. And overall, the art style as well, it's very, it's cute. It's very anime, but then you compare it to Nico, and it's also very cute, very anime, but in a different way. She is a very alien entity in this new world, and I like that little distinction between the two. I would heavily recommend it if you're, even if you're not into puzzles, there's such metagaming where your wallpaper gets changed and everything to the puzzle answer. If you interact with the PC enough, like, you know, or in, spe you know, during special puzzles, it's like, here's some tips, you know, here's a wallpaper for you, you silly little goose, go on, go on, do the puzzle. Um, overall, would heavily recommend if you're even if I'm not big into puzzlers either too much at least this was very much a nice medium between just exploration you know talking you know learning about the lore and then the puzzles I would heavily recommend it as a result I, I'd, I'd give it about like an eight or a nine out of ten only that technical issue drew me back a little bit yeah that I'm really surprised like that seems very frustrating <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah uh mox what about you i loved this game i played it after our two weeks ago our previous uh game video game club mm -hmm. i went all the way up until the solstice ending and i and i didn't like i so i didn't do the solstice ending until today but i just loved it it was very cute i really enjoyed like the meta elements and also the storyline was like the plot was incredibly well developed i can't believe there's lore in this game that i spent like i don't know five six hours playing all together i just really loved it it you have to play it blind and like I, you can i like the idea that you guys are saying about like stopping when when nico sleeps but also you can just sit and play through it because it doesn't take that much time but it was so <laughs> cute um i did have like, I don't know, I, I got stuck a couple of times and I I, th I think it was because I just wasn't exploring. It's not very clear, like, where you transition to the next map. So I had to, like, look up, like, oh, my God, what do I do from here? I don't even know what to do. Um, and so I, I had to, like, look up how to do a couple things. But most of the game I was able to, like, play, especially with the hints, like Vin was saying. Um, so I would also give it a 9 out of 10 just because of the I just got stuck a couple. Austin. Oh, I feel really bad going last. No, no, um, you have to. <laughs> yeah. I have to what? Give you us, have to give go a, last. Give us your truthful review. Don't sugarcoat yes. it. Okay. So I came in very hyped on this game. I had multiple people like tell me this was like their favorite game. It had these overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam. Like everything told me this was going to be like, I should be very hyped to play this game. Um. And I think my expectations were set a little too high. Uh, uh, so, Tyler, I, 
just like you, I didn't really love the music at the start. I think I even sent you a message. I was like, I'm really glad I didn't you blind did. order that the, that vinyl soundtrack. Um, but I like you, I also started to like it more towards the end. Um, I felt very incomplete when I finished the game, and it didn't go out of its way to to like tell me how to start it again for for the 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 true ending. But I also didn't really understand that the the true ending was going to have a, a much different playthrough. It's I, I to me it sounded like I was just going to replay the game and have to figure out how to get the better ending or something like that, or try to find what's different. Mm. And when I was faced with that, I was like, I don't think I want to play through that game again. That's exactly I, I I why didn't... I stopped. So I exactly, hope you'll come back yeah. after. But keep going, sorry. Yeah. So now that you guys have told me, it sounds like I should go play through that that other ending. But just from what I did play, and not wanting to spend the the two or three hours to to redo that game, um, like I didn't dislike it, but I didn't like it as much as I was hoping that I would. Um, I got overwhelmed. I I felt very overwhelmed. Anytime I would go to a new area, it was just like there were so many places to go. And I get choice anxiety. Uh, mm-hmm. And everyone told me, it was like, it, it looks more intimidating than it is. And that that was true, but like, I felt so anxious. Uh, yeah. Trying to like, remember like, okay, I need to make sure I go re-explore this area. I haven't explored everything and trying to remember all the turns I've taken. I get, I get, I get praised about that. It's um, not clear like I, when you're going to move to the next area or like be stopped from going too. back. Sorry, keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was also kind of hard to see what was going on because everyone's like, play it, play it in windowed mode. You can't change the size of the window. Um, it's, it's stuck at one size. (laughs) (laughs) And if you're playing on a 1440p screen, God forbid you're playing on a 4k. uh, I feel, I feel so bad. Yeah. Uh, I learned if you want to make the window bigger, play with your screen at a lower resolution. And it, uh, it, (laughs) that that does the scaling for you. But I I learned that kind of later into the game. Uh, I really loved the fourth wall breaking stuff and the puzzles around that, but they were all so short that it was like, oh, I want more of that. <laughs> I like talking to Nico. Like any time I got to talk directly with Nico, I thought was really special. But again, that th- those were kind of few and far between. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think I just came in expecting more, and the ending left me just feeling very. It was like everything's building to something, and then it just stopped. And on that experience by itself, I, know, I acknowledge I have not gotten the complete experience because I haven't done the true ending, which I, it sounds like I need to go do. But just on the experience that I played and ended on, um, I would give it like a 7 out of a 10. And initially I was coming in planning to give this whole critique on the Steam review system where it's can either recommend or not recommend. Mm-hmm. And overwhelmingly positive reviews doesn't necessarily mean it's the best game ever just means that a lot of people liked it Mm -hmm. right um whereas so it's it's the same problem with rotten tomatoes something that is universally liked doesn't mean it's the best movie of all time it's just everyone likes something yeah rotten tomatoes can kick rocks again they they (laughs) they hate it on page master all right so oh my goodness i know right sorry that's a great movie (laughs) (laughs) but uh it sounds like my opinion is uh, incomplete, much like my playthrough. So yes. I, I guess today I need to go play Solstice, play through the rest of that. Yeah. Yes, yeah. you must. Yeah. The the ending that you're left off with after a first playthrough is very unsatisfying. That's true. I was very disappointed. Yeah, and that's why the documents are like, you know, this may not be the full thing. Mm. But going back and in, I didn't I, find that. You- I just. I, I just tried relaunching the game, and it was like, "Yep, it's still stuck at the end here." It was just <laughs> yeah. like, ah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just got to delete that uh, save date that begins with the letter P, and <laughs> bingo, you're good to go. Don't 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 okay. mess around deleting random files like Ven did to find the answer. I know. <laughs> no, <laughs> it no, no, it actually like didn't 32? do. It didn't sure. do much actually. Oh, okay. um, thankfully, because I was afraid. I, I was <laughs> like, but I kept, I held the backup. Obviously, it's just like, am I gonna? break this and thankfully it didn't the game kind of had a ba- like a backup to the backup of the system nice. somehow on the cloud i guess um cuz it connects to the cloud so yeah, yeah. that makes sense yeah all right well 
that was a little dive in our take on one shot and if you enjoyed hearing us discuss one shot and want to join us for the next video game club episode stay put because our next video game club vote just ended and it was between horizon zero dawn paper mario and the legend of zelda link's awakening remake and it is going to be i'm pretty sure it's going to be paper mario but i'm going to check anyway paper mario and paper mario is going to be a special one it's going to be two episodes um the stopping point is after chap as soon as chapter four ends that is the stopping point for paper mario um thank you everyone for joining us again just as a reminder you can catch us here on twitch.tv slash bomb tv every two weeks at two eastern with the next stream being on march 13th if you can't make the live session don't worry you can catch on youtube and all major podcast services uh, before we leave, Ben, thank you so much for joining us. Really, yes, um, thank you. Please remind, yeah, thank you for yeah, having me. Yeah, please remind people like where they can find you. Uh, and I'm curious, like, would you ever be down to like do like a one shot run, like for GDQ or something, or a one shot run? That would be interesting, actually. A Solstice run would be great, correct? Um, just, just a disclaimer: crack means fun in Irish. Sorry, it's just a saying. Uh, <laughs> But uh, just if you want to find me here on Twitch, it's VYNN for November ADA. It'd be great to have you stop by. Uh, Twitch is the same. On YouTube, it's also the same. Pretty much those are the, the main ones. And then I have an Instagram under the same alias, but I don't really update that. But yeah, that's, that's it. Yeah. And uh, it's a pretty good community, and there's Discord too and everything, and good people. From my interaction, at least, really positive. Very talented. So much talent. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> the faith, the faith to chapter two run was nuts. It was so, it was so great. Um, well, thank you. Yeah, uh, Austin, thank you so much for joining us. Well, hey, thanks for having me. Of course, and Mox, thank you. I know you've been busy. Well, I guess things have nope, kind of less calmed busy down. Now. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you for choosing this game, everyone. I loved it. Aww. I'm Tyler. This was Video Game Club episode 43, One Shot, and we're out.